Joining us right now is Ted Williams, a former police officer uh, and a Washington lawyer and uh, a Fox News legal analyst. Mr. Williams, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Well, Ted, look, you're a police officer, former police officer. You're a current attorney. Uh, how do you look at this situation? What are the things that jump out to you with your, your perspective from those two different uh, uh, parts of your life? Well, it is no doubt about it that there, that, that this confrontation left quite a bit and quite a few question marks. First of all, you had Michael Brown and Dorian Johnson. They had just left a store there where, as they called him Big Mike, uh, we've seen the video. Most of your viewers uh, uh, probably have seen the video. Uh, uh, and at that store, there was certainly a confrontation. Uh, once they left that area, there is still a question mark as to what Officer Wilson knew. But what we do know is that, and what has to be also looked at, is Michael Brown's state of mind. Simply meaning, uh, he had just committed a robbery. Some called it a larceny, but he had actually committed a crime in that liquor store. So when he's confronted with the police officer, and try to think about this, the police officer, the knee officer did not know the chief of police who said he didn't know of the robbery, but what he did uh, know was that Michael Brown and Dorian Johnson were in the middle of a street. And as any good law enforcement officer would do, he asked them to get over to the side to the curb. Now, uh, at that stage, he goes past uh, them. He's still looking at them, from what I understand, through the rearview mirror. But there was a confrontation at that time, because once the officer told him to get over to the side, there was profanity used uh, by Johnson and Brown. The police officer uh, backed his automobile up uh, after this profanity is used. He's parallel to them. Now, this is where it gets uh, somewhat cloudy. Dorian Johnson's story is that the police officer uh, backed up to him. He couldn't get out of his co police car uh, because they had the door somewhat blocked, and that the police officer reached through the window and grabbed Michael Brown, at which time Michael Brown and the police officer had some kind of a struggle. The police officer pulled his gun and shot Michael Brown. Now, that's Dorian Brown's side of the story. Law enforcement side of the story is that the police officer attempted to get out of the car. Michael Brown hit the police officer in the face, and that there was a struggle in the police car over the police officer's gun. The police officer wound up shooting Michael Brown. Michael Brown started running. Police officer chased after Michael Brown. And at some stage, and this is also where it gets murky, uh, Dorian Johnson, who is one of the eyewitnesses, said that Michael Brown had been shot in the back and that he turned around, said, I give up, hands up in the air, and that the police officer unloaded on Michael Brown. Well, when you look at the autopsy report, and that autopsy was performed by one of my very best friends, Dr. Michael Bodden. Dr. Bodden's report shows that there were six shots, but that none of the shots were to the back. Yeah. And that's very important because if the police officer shot him in the back, not knowing what Michael Brown had done, you just can't shoot somebody in the back. And that would have been significant, and that could have gone against the police officer. Given, given but, uh, uh, your police experience, if there was a sure. struggle at the squad car, no matter what the circumstances, and, and that apparently there was a struggle over the gun one hears, is the police officer uh, justified in using lethal force? Well, if he felt that his life was in danger... And when you look really at the size of Michael Brown and 
if there was that struggle over the gun, absolutely the police officer would be justified in using a deadly force. All right, great. Thank you. Oh, listen, Ted Williams, thank you for joining us. Washington lawyer, former D.C. police officer. Obviously, you have very unique insight into this, and uh, thank you for giving us such a uh, thorough breakdown on uh, what's in question still in this very controversial well, situation. Well, let me just quickly say to yeah. you that what's going to be very important of the toxicology, re- toxicology report also what's going to be important of the forensics to see if the DNA is on the police officer's gun that would be some consistency as to what actually happened, and yep. I think that's going to be significant and important in this case. All right. Uh, Ted Williams, always a pleasure. Thank you so much, my friend. My pleasure.